Hey, I'd like to welcome you to another episode of Mission Matters. My name is Adam Torres, and if you'd like to apply to be a guest in the show, just head on over to missionmatters.com and click on Become a Guest to Apply. All right, so today I have Wiley McGraw on the line. He's a founder and performance accelerator over at Radical Performance Acceleration, and he's also the podcast host of Wise Words and Whiskey with Wiley McGraw, and I'm a sucker for alliteration. What a great name for his show. Hey, welcome to the show, Wiley. Good to have you on. I appreciate you having me on here, Adam. Thank you so much. All right, Wiley. So uh, I'm excited to get into today's topic. So we're going to go into performance, performance, and all the great things that you're doing over at Radical Performance Acceleration. I know you're working with, um, you know, top top athletes. You're working with Fortune 500 CEOs. You're, I mean, you got a lot going on, and we're going to get into mm -hmm. that and what it takes to really perform. But before we do that, uh, we'll start we'll start this episode the way that we start them all with our Mission Matters Minute. So, Wiley, we at Mission Matters, we amplify stories for entrepreneurs, executives, and experts. That's our mission. Wiley, what mission matters to you? <laughs> the mission that matters to me the most, Adam, uh, is, is exactly what it, I'm doing right now in the world, and that's slaying the demons of very powerful, prominent leaders that have impact and influence on the masses. My focus and my determination at all cost is to end the dysfunction that keeps plaguing society and causing us to be more divisive, more chaotic, and more erratic in our abilities to actually live from a place of peace, satisfaction, and fulfillment. And founding Radical Performance Acceleration was more of a customized business around the innate gifts and skills that I possess that I've discovered mm -hmm. through my life experiences to truly see and expose the blind spots, erupt and eradicate the stresses that people carry inside them, and truly accelerate their performance, both personally and professionally, from a place of intimate integration into these individuals' lives. So the work that I do is very customized. So my mission to me uh, is a crusade of slaying these demons, getting these leaders to a place of, of absolute balance, satisfaction, peace, so they can actually create more positive impact out in the world. So I, 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 it's great having you on, first off, and I know you have a unique um, background, and maybe mm. let's get into that a little bit. Like, like, how did you get obsessed with this, this, this idea of performance and accelerate? Like, where did that start with you? I think being a, a star uh, baseball player uh, growing up in, the, in a household of competitive athletes, my father being a semi-pro ball player, I was raised around the likes of Bo Jackson, Rod Carew. I met Mickey Mantle when I was nine years old. I got trained by, you know, the Angels pitching staff in the 80s. Um, right off the bat, you know, it was all about mindset and focus and being a, a top performer in that sport. But I started to recognize, I guess, innately, if you will, this uh, gap in how human beings live their lives and how they deal and manage with real stress and how that affects people's performance overall in life. And as I started to pull away from baseball, the expectation of being this athlete from my father and his colleagues and all these pros that were around me, I wanted to go figure out more about who I was. I felt that this is what's missing in the world. We're not given the right environments to discover what we're truly capable of and who we really are at the core without the chaos that we tend to experience as humans. So I got into that world of bull riding, became a competitive bull rider, the, the wild world of, of the unknowns and embracing fear. And I found that that was the right path to true performance and peak performance and an ability to, to be at the top of your game. So I chased any and all environments that could scare the crap out of me and push me beyond my own limits mentally, emotionally, physically, even spiritually, and energetically. And then eventually the military came knocking. So it was in the throes of war serving with the 101st Airborne Division uh, as a combat infantry leader in my three tours overseas that I really started to connect the dots that what's lacking in true performance is the fact that people are not being contained properly. They're not facing their truth or their demons, if you will, the stresses that plague them from childhood traumas, bad experiences in life. They tend to sweep them under the rug, suck it up, and just try to override it and deal with it and hoping that maybe uh, they can still experience like success, if you will, in life. And that's what really drove me to become obsessed with this. And when I got out of the military, Adam, um, I started to go down that path of self-mastery and I found more and more blind spots in the personal development world. I found that everybody was approaching problem solving from the outside in and not the inside out. And I recognized quickly that this gift that I possessed was important to start providing other people those environments intimately with them, which is why it led me into working with combat veterans of PTSD first and foremost. And then eventually uh, it just became a word of mouth referral based thing because people were recognizing the life altering experiences and results that I was being able to create with my clients 
uh, as the go-to, uh, you know, uh, full stop, you know, the buck stops here type mm-hmm. of uh, human performance growth. So that's exactly why I'm committed to what I'm doing today. So if I'm, I'm curious from your standpoint, because, and I was going to ask the uh, question kind of jokingly in the beginning and say, do you have <laughs> to be born into it? And I didn't know your exact background of like childhood. I mean, I know what I could find mm-hmm. online from you. I know like what I can see, obviously, in your LinkedIn and all these good things, which by the way, uh, a great, great branding on your, on your, on your profile. <laughs> I, I, who, who's that gentleman sitting next to you or standing next to you on there? I think I know who it is. That's uh, great, Alice Cooper. Yep, of course Alice it Cooper. is. The great. Come on. I was like, man, I want an Alice Cooper banner. Where's he at? He's, no, he's a great guy. He's definitely a great guy for sure. It was, it was a good time meeting him for the short period that I did. But yeah, yep. uh, those are the types awesome. of people that I so, work with, you know, so I'm usually around yep. that, that, that caliber of folks. So I, um, so, you know, it started out in my head thinking about it kind of jokingly, do you have to be born into it? But then as I mm-hmm. hear more about it, I mean, you started at a young age and I know you're working with, you know, a lot of individuals for those, is there, is it possible you know, for everyone to increase their performance. So whether they're, and I'll, I'll tell you the context of the question. So sure. whether they're, they're maybe not, at, you know, a Fortune 500 CEO, um, maybe, they, maybe they're, you know, a small business owner, maybe right. they're a mid-sized business owner. Like, is it possible for everybody to get, like, incrementally better? Absolutely. I mean, human, the human capacity for um, real potential and real growth and, and unbelievable uh, achievement is is within, I think, every individual human, regardless of, how far off the spectrum we might be from, uh, you know, the, the criminal over mm-hmm. here all the way to the top level, you know, uh, you know mm-hmm. leader of a nation. It doesn't matter. But at the end of the day, it's about recognizing that we all have different levels of capacity when it comes to our individual lives. We all have our own path. There is certain parts of who we are that are not meant to be the Fortune 500 CEO, but are meant to impact the world down here over with the businesses or maybe the work that we're doing. It's about finding true satisfaction with the ability to push yourself or having the right resources that are outside of you that can push you uh, and challenge you in the way that matches who you are and not necessarily you trying to be like someone else. So I, what I look at here, Adam, is it's this lack of real evolution from when we were kids. When we're born from zero to like six or seven years old, we are emulating the world around us so we can start kind of getting a, a grasp on how the world works, but eventually we're, we're supposed to evolve and start developing more of who we really are outside of that emulation. But unfortunately, as people get older, there's not enough real containment to stretch people and push people and challenge them to really go through the fears and the unknowns to grow and become their best, no matter what level they're performing at. And people go out into the world and say, I want to be a high performance achiever in my life. I'm going to emulate uh, X, Y, Z, so-and-so guru or this person here because they've got the things that in my head I want. And then we end up finding that people chase the idea of peak performance in their lives rather than knowing how to master it for who they are and what level they're performing at. Hmm. And so what do you think, and I, I know it's not going to be one thing, right? I'm, I'm sure and everybody's different depending on the, and maybe, the, maybe it is one thing. I don't know, but mm-hmm. I, I doubt it. What do you think? Because nobody is, is intentionally, let's just say, performing at less than peak capacity, right? To put a little, <laughs> little play on, on your book, right? Peak performance. Um, sure. like what, do you, what are some of the things that, uh, that you feel that just kind of, in, in, you know, working with so many individuals that, they're, they're, that they're missing or that they're overlooking or that like, like what's holding them back. Cause nobody's intentionally like goes, wakes up and be like, ah, today I'm just going to not, I'm going to work really hard, but I don't want to perform that well today. It's fine. I don't want results. Right. <laughs> oh, there's so many things I could unpack with you right now. I know. I already <laughs> know. That's why I, I gave you the, I gave you the, uh-huh. the whole, the, the bomb goes off. Go for it. <laughs> yeah, it does. And I'm going to do my best to make sure that the bombs keep going off in succinct order here to give you the, some good information for your audience. But uh, at the end of the day, Number, number one, uh, my work is very unique and customized. I only work with two to three people per year. It's very intimate. It's very high level. It's very, very intense. So I don't have – I'm not like a mass kind of uh, uh, a support mm-hmm. system. I do work with those individual leaders that have influence no matter what their industry or their title is because these are the types of people that actually want to maximize their impact in a positive way, and they're the ones that tend to find me that introduce me. So that's one part of it. The other part is through my 14 years of doing this, basically in the shadows or behind the scenes before the pandemic, um, I recognized all those different elements that you just asked about when it comes to people and how they get up in the morning and what they set their focus and their attentions on on a daily basis. There are people that get up in the morning and say, you know what, 
I only want to operate at 50% today. I don't feel like being 100%. Mm -hmm. But it's when we punish ourselves and we compare ourselves to the idea that, well, that Navy SEAL says that I should be going 110% 24-7 and never give up and never quit. But that might not be the right ideal or the right kind of motivation for said individual who says, I only got 50% to give today. So if you can give yourself permission to recognize that, if you get up and you just stay focused on what really does matter for you individually, what you look to achieve, the alignment that you can create in your life and, and experience satisfaction, even if it's 50% of your ability in that day, you'll find that that actually supports your ability to embrace challenges that come your way to manage the outer volatility that you might experience as a, a business owner, an athlete, an entrepreneur, even someone who works for a corporation. There are people out there, though, at the same time that I've talked to you, Adam, that say, hey, look, you know what? I'm lazy, and I love where I'm at. I'm happy where, where I'm at. And if they can accept and acknowledge that that's where they find peace in their life, good for them. We should not look at them with a, a side eye. Allow them to be in their lane where they're supposed to be. And the people that say, I want to be my best, I want to, to, to reach my peak performance. I want to know what it's like to maximize potential. If those people are waking up saying, well, I want that, but I'm not willing to embrace the, the suck today so I can get after it and I can get these things done that I, I know that I need to get done to make those, those goals reality, then they're failing themselves. And then what ends up happening the last bomb that you just asked me about that I will drop on you and your audience here is this idea that human beings – are just this forever work in progress. We are a, on this perpetual path of constant growth and personal de development addictions and all of these different, you know, limitations that the mind wants to play on us, thinking that, well, you know what, I'm human after all, and there's no such thing as getting to the top of your game. You're always on a quest for figuring out how you can uh, eventually achieve that, and then this is where people also stay stuck as well. Mm. Um, man, so much more to unpack there, but I want, sure. I want to jump around. I want to, I want to jump, I want to jump around a bit here. Sure. Um, I do want to spend some time on, um, I guess I'm a big fan of podcasts and podcasting for all the shows, uh, all the listeners that have been listening to this show for a long time. They know I love mm -hmm. promoting other podcasters and I think just the podcast community in general is just amazing. And so your show, Wise Words and Whiskey with Wiley McGraw, other than the amazing alliteration, um, what was the inspiration for this? Wow. Uh, I love it. Well, first and foremost, it's, um, this long time coming where the, my insights and my, my per, the philosophies that I've experienced live by and that I am, am body and employ in the work that I do, people for years were saying, hey, look, I really think you need to put something together where you can give a more low-key low environment for people to learn a little bit more about who you are, the insights that you have, what you've learned working with these powerful people without it feeling like they have to you know, invest in doing work with you or you know, they're, maybe they're not your ideal clients. And over the years, we were discussing it. And I'm also a whiskey connoisseur. I grew up in a, a Scottish household. My family's from uh, Glasgow, Scotland. So whiskey was always kind of the, the drink that was around me. So for me, I fell in love with the high-performance nature of how these single malt scotch distillers and malt masters produce this unbelievable beverage that you can truly enjoy and appreciate in a more like, you know, a fireside chat style environment when you're hanging out with friends, meet business colleagues, you pour a little glass of whiskey, you have great conversation. And we decided, you know what, let's marry the two versions of my love and my passion and my commitment to high performance living, real high performance living from all angles of life into the love that I have for whiskey and bring on some really cool guests in a low key conversations on high performance living environment where it's unscripted. It's not pre prepared. It's really just I bring to the table what I want to unpack with each guest. We a sip a very specific type of whiskey that I introduce to the audience so that people can hang out, learn something about that as well as they get to learn about insights that can bring more peace and satisfaction in their life. So that's really where this whole podcast just took off from. And we decided recently, let's, let's make it happen. So we're 12 episodes deep already, and I'm really falling in love with the idea of continuing the show and making it something. It's fun. Oh man, that that is exciting, and um, I know I know you're. You said twelve episodes deep, so to me that's a veteran. Anything over ten episodes, then you, you got your you got your training wheels off, right? Um, okay. What's been one of your What's been one of your favorite things about just about the podcast format or being a podcaster? Now now that you've crossed over to the other side, I know you've been right. being interviewed for years, but now that you're on the other side of the mic, what's been one of your favorite things that maybe you didn't you didn't expect? Ooh, I love it. You know what I love about that question is because it ties into even the philosophies that I talk about when it comes to mm -hmm. being stretched and pushed is stepping into the world, Adam, 
you know, uh, from being an interviewee into an interviewer or a host different. <laughs> is a completely different mindset. Jeff. Absolutely. It is. doesn't matter how much experience you have as an expert in your field or what it is that you've been doing for so many years. What I love about it is it challenged me to, to, to learn even more so about my capacity to actually manage many moving parts while keeping the energy on track with the guests, giving good, valuable information, putting out really good vibes and, and challenges that really make something special for those that are looking for it. So it became this like, you know, it's easy to sit with you and have this conversation and answer your questions mm -hmm. and kind of dive into my background, but getting to, to flip the script, it's almost like I got really turned on by the, the nerves that showed up, getting to host a show, combining the love that I have for my lifestyle and what it is I do for, for leaders, et cetera, into this world of teaching people about how to appreciate spirits, and how to value low-key conversations and where they can apply these insights to their lives. To me, it was like, wow, I love the idea of how it challenges me every single time I have to sit in front of a, a guest and keep everything on track and inspire people while they're listening. To me, that's the best part. Oh, it's, it's awesome. Um, yep. well, well, Wiley, I have to say uh, it has been great having you on the show, and I know I know my audience got quite a bit of value out of this and learned a lot because I did as well. Um, awesome. That being said, if somebody is if somebody's listening to this and they want to connect and learn more, of course, about about what you're doing overall over at Radical Performance Acceleration, or if they want to follow your your podcast, or if they of course want to pick up a copy of your book, um, Peak Performance, um, what's the best way for them to connect with you and uh, follow over follow up overall. Absolutely. Well, I love that. First, I mean, they can hang out at WileyMcGraw.com, W-Y-L-I-E-M-C-G-R-A-W.com, where all my philosophies and insights, I wrote a couple white papers that's distilling down the nature of my work with leaders that people can start implementing into their lives. But I would absolutely love people to tune into the podcast, subscribe to the YouTube channel, to Apple Podcasts. I'm doing a whiskey, premium whiskey giveaway once a month for the next year. So there is a giveaway link that they can jump into as well. Um, so if they want to go there and, and, and win a, a, a free bottle of the Balvini uh, Double Wood 12 of uh, Heavy Bottoms Rocks Glass and an opportunity to be a guest on the show as well, that link will mm. be provided and they can join the giveaway and participate in the conversation. Let's just get the word out there that this thing exists so that people can start tapping into some more high-performance insights and mi mindset uh, tools that can make them better in their lives as well. Oh, that's wonderful. And we'll, we'll put all that information in the show notes so that uh, our audience can just click on the links and head right on over and check out, check everything out you're doing. And uh, speaking of the audience, if this is your first time engaging with or connecting with the Mission Matters platform overall, um, we're all about bringing on business owners, entrepreneurs, and executives and having them share their mission, uh, the reason behind their mission, really what they're doing to go out there and uh, help the world and the marketplace in general. And if that's the type of content that sounds interesting or fun or engaging to you, hit that subscribe button because we have many more mission-based individuals just like Wiley coming up on the line, and we don't want you to miss a thing. And Wiley, again, Thank you so much for coming on the show. It's really been a pleasure getting to uh, getting to know you, your background, and all the great words you're doing over at Wise Words and Whiskey with Wiley McGraw. And for my audience, definitely check that out. So thanks again, Wiley. Adam, thank you, brother. It's been a pleasure.